did a lot more worrying than it needed to. When I saw the needle, I'm like, ah, it's long. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got it, it wasn't that bad, huh? No, sir. No, what did you do, Mr. Trent? What? I earned, I earned my black gold belt, sir. Oh, that's definitely fun. Yeah, congratulations to all the black belts that promoted and Mr. Trent earned his black gold. So give yourselves a big hand in that job. Okay, well, well, let's get started. We've got everybody logging in now. Um, so last week, I'm just going to review real fast because last week we went through the law of the inner circle. And we talked about um, how... It's how important a leader's potential is determined by those closest to him. So having the right people in the team. And, and we talked about how you can improve that team. So nobody does anything great alone. What makes the difference is a leader's uh, inner circle. And so that's um, really all the stuff that we went through last week. So um, let's continue on in talking a little bit more about it. And I'm going to have you guys share some of your homework that you did, okay? So we talked about Lance Armstrong and how cycling really is a team sport, even if it doesn't seem like it to the casual observer, okay? They really do have to rely on each other. And they talked about how uh, he credits his success winning seven times uh, in the Tour de France because of his team. He had the right coaches, he had the right people that he brought onto his team, and even his team members that helped him uh, win the tour. So um, again, something that you can't be successful without a good team. Okay, uh, we also talked about Mother Teresa and how uh, we referred to her as a one. <clears throat> some some people think, well, you know, one man band thing, or if there's a one man team. But she had a quote in that we reviewed. It says, "I can do what you cannot do. You can do what I cannot do." So we all have strengths that we can bring to the team. And we also have weaknesses, and that's an important part of it. And so that's also part of why we like to get new instructors. We, we get new karate instructors because if you just had the one instructor as your leader, you would not only pick up their strengths, but you'd also pick up their weaknesses. Okay? And that's some, something that's important is that we, we constantly are uh, getting new team members and new leaders, and, and that helps us grow as uh, martial artists as well as anything else. Okay, and then we said, be intentional about your relationship building. So we, we wanted you to ask some of these questions. Do they have high influence with others? Do they bring a complimentary gift to the table? Do they add value to me and the organization? Do they positively impact other inner circle members? And if you can answer yes to those, then probably have a good person to be on your team. You want them in your inner circle. Okay, and we also said, um, I wanted you to take some time. So this was the homework, and I wanted some of you guys to share with us. Uh, I wanted you to write down the top five people that you spend most of your time with, and then I wanted you to identify if they were a leaner or a lifter, and then if they are a lifter, what are some of the positive things that they contribute? So um, if you want to share, I want you to just share one person, and I want you to say, this person uh, I spent a lot of time with, and I think of them as a lifter, and here's why. Okay, anybody have any lifters that they'd like to share? Okay, um, is that Sam? Seth? Over there, go ahead and I'm gonna unmute you. I gotcha. Oh, just gonna unmute. There you go. Okay, go ahead and share, bud. Um, so I spend a lot of time with my brothers and family. And they're lifters because they um, positively impact me. And um, um, it's just about sometimes they're a little um, hard on me, but that doesn't really um, help. But most of the time, they're really helping me out and stuff. Good. OK, thanks for sharing, buddy. Anybody else want to share? A lifter. <laughs> Nobody else wants to share today? Everybody? Me, sir. Okay, Carter, go for it. Uh, Mama, I had, I was doing five people, Mama, Dad, Mima, Papa, and, Luce, and one of my friends. 
Okay. Dada and Mama, Mama and Dada are lifters because they make my, my breakfast help me with home and help me with homework. Very good. Okay. Thanks for sharing, buddy. Okay. So um, that we, we talked about how important it is to have the right people on your team and you want to always be looking for new people to, to improve your team. Okay. And when we say team, it could be uh, your friends. It could be uh, at school. It could be a karate. And how can you add to having those people in your team? So constantly be on the lookout, lookout for improving your team, just like we do here. Okay. So this week we're talking about the law of empowerment, chapter 12. So this is the 12th law of the law of empowerment. So um, only secure leaders give powers to others. So the only way to make yourself indispensable, what does that mean to be indispensable? That's a big word. You can tell me what that big word means. What is indispensable? Ms. Addison, how about you? Can I pick on you? What, what do you think indispensable means? Um, kind of like you can't live without it. Yeah, good way to put it. You can't live without it. You can't, you, you're basically, uh, at that point, you're non-replaceable, basically. That's kind of another way to say it. Replaceable or indispensable. It's written, you're something that they can't just throw away, okay? So if I dispense something, I, I get rid of it, okay? So I... The, the only way to make yourself indispensable is to make yourself dispensable. Okay, I'll say that again. If the only, the only way to make yourself indispensable is to make yourself dispensable. What does that mean? You can tell me, what does that mean to them? It means you have to train other people to do the same job that you do. Yeah, you want to be able to go missing and everything still works. Okay, if I have a good team and I make myself dispensable, that means I could not show up and nobody would probably even notice. Everything would still work. Everything would still flow. Okay, and that's what they mean is to make yourself indispensable is to make yourself dispensable. So by becoming a secure leader who can give power away, you will make your organization, your team more powerful. Okay, who's ever known somebody who just likes to take control of everything. They have to be the one in control. Anybody know that, that person? Yeah, some people, that is what they do, that they want to take control. They have to be in control of everything all the time. And what happens when that happens is that, well, they're not really being a good leader. But if you disregard the law of empowerment, your potential will be limited, meaning that you really do need to empower other people. So, Let's talk about this guy, Henry Ford. Who can tell me what Henry Ford did? Pretty, pretty famous guy, Miss Addison. What did Henry Ford do? Henry Ford is the founder of the oh-so-famous car brand Ford. <laughs> That's right. He was the former, or he was the, the founder, and also Henry Ford was a, a pioneer. He developed a lot of stuff, almost like an inventor. Okay, so. Uh, he said, uh, he said a couple things. He said, I will build a motor car for the multitude. It will be large enough for the family, but small enough for the individual to run and care for it. It will be constructed of the best men to be hired after the simplest designs that modern engineering can devise. But it will also be so, so low in price that anyone can, making a decent salary will be able to own one and enjoy with his family the blessings of and of pleasure in God's open spaces. So he said that. This is a long time ago. So what does that tell you about his leadership? Okay, the, just in his statement there, what, what kind of uh, laws that we've covered do you think he's demonstrating with that level of a, of a statement? Do you think, yes, Miss Addison? I'd say um, the law of addition is kind of a big one because he's taken into the effect that some people don't have super high salaries. So he's figuring out that people have different strengths and weaknesses and he's making it available to all different types of people. Okay. 
Um, and a lot of inventors or innovators or founders of companies that they are, and we haven't covered this law yet, it's coming up, the law of the big picture, okay? The law of the big picture is, you've, you've got, he's got this vision in that statement. He said, said a lot. He said, anybody's gonna be able to afford this thing, okay? And he hadn't even really come up with the production line and all these other things, but he had this vision. So he had the law of the big picture. But he was a he was a, a definitely a revolutionary automobile industry uh, innovator and, and legend, okay, in American business history. So in 1903, he co-founded the Ford Motor Company, and he believed the future was putting cars within reach of the average American worker. The Model T changed life. By 1914, Ford was producing 50% of all the cars out there. One company made half of everything that was ever produced. Okay, so that's a pretty big market share, but he wasn't all su successful and positive in his achievement. He did not embrace the law of empowerment. He was constantly undermining his leaders and he looked over his employees' shoulders. He uh, went as far as creating a department within his company to look over employees and supervise their private lives. Okay, so he was very invasive in this and he didn't empower them. In fact, he was almost overbearing. Okay, and that, that was not showing the law of empowerment. And um, one of his sons, Edsel, worked hard when Ford became um, more eccentric. And the, the company kept losing their best executives. They kept losing all their leaders because he was so overpowering. Okay? He didn't empower them. He took the power away from them. And so they left. They didn't want to be part of his team anymore. So um, Edsel's son, um, Henry Ford Jr., lose, started losing $1 million dollars a day the company started going in, in the wrong direction so young henry hired a vice president who quickly brought in 150 outstanding executives and turned the company around okay and made made it uh profitable again and also made it, them gain back all their sales okay so this was a big deal because henry was so worried about his own position he began pinning top exe pitting top ex executives against each other. He started creating a lot of problems. So Ford believed, don't let the employees get too comfortable. He wanted them to always be on edge, like thinking, well, I might get fired. So it created a very anxious workplace for them. Nobody wanted to be there, okay? And um, always do what, what was unexpected. Was that empowering? No, okay? So he definitely didn't embrace the law of empowerment. He should have been developing leaders, then turning them loose to succeed, saying, I'm going to develop you, and now I'm going to let you run, and I'm let you be, um, do your job and do things right, okay? So to lead others well, we must help them to reach their biggest potential, their most potential on their side, and give them power, help them succeed. So that's what we want to do as leaders. Let's talk about in the karate school. So um, how is it, what's... What's one way you can empower other people in the credit school? By being a leader. Okay, if you're a leader, what could you do in, in empowering other people? Could you ask other people to, to do things and see and, and give them that power or that responsibility? Like, why don't you lead the group? Or um, why don't you do this? So if, if like, Mr. Matthew there, he was in class and he had a, a person in the class, even if they weren't a leader, even if they were just a white belt, could they become a leader? Could you empower them to lead the white belt group? Yes, sir. Good. And what does that do to you? How does that make you look? Makes you look more like a leader, right? Okay. Yes, that's the law of empowerment. So um, that's one example there. Okay. So um, think about these childhood games, King of the Hill and follow the leader. Which one of those do you think is more about power? What about King of the Hill? How does that work? I don't know that game. Okay, you knock others down so you can be the leader. You basically shove other people out of the way, you push them out of the way, and you put yourself in the leadership role. Okay, is that empowerment? No, follow the leader. Yeah, follow the leader is one, okay? So if I put, say, okay, you're the leader now. That's empowerment, okay? Following the leader is a good example of that. So um, what is wrong with both of these though is that they lead us to believe that we must push others down in order to, to hold power, 
But the truth is, is when you give some of your leadership to others, there's still plenty to go around. There's plenty of leadership to go around. You just got to give it to others. Okay. Now there's three main reasons leaders fail to empower others. First off is job security, desire for job security. They think if I give somebody else authority or leadership, they might take my job. Okay, the number one barrier to empowerment is really the desire for job security. The number one enemy of empowerment is the fear of losing what we have. Okay, so weak leaders worry that if they help subordinates, the people that are following them, they will become dispensable, making it their job useful. Okay, but the only way to make your your indispensable make yourself indispensable is to make yourself dispensable, is like we said. So when you empower other people, even to the point where they can take over your job, you will develop a pattern of achievement, pattern of success, and have, it, have so much success that leading teams, you'll become irreplaceable. Okay? You might ask yourself, well, what if I work myself out of a job? What if I empower other people and I, I make it so I don't even have to show up? Okay, is that a good thing? Well, you might think, no, that's not, but really it is. Okay, so that can happen in the short term, but if you keep raising up good leaders and empowering them, you will develop a pattern of achievement, like I said, and excellence in leadership that will be recognized. People will recognize that you're empowering others and you're creating leadership. Okay, if the teams you lead always seem to succeed, people will figure out that you're leading them well. Okay, and the second barrier. Uh, to empowerment is resistance to change. Leaders require change, leadership requires change, and for people to grow and innovate. Okay, so change is the process, is the price of progress. If you want to progress, you have to change. That's just part of it. Okay, so change is the price of progress, he says. Naturally, people usually don't like change. Okay, who doesn't like change? Who likes to be the same all the time? And change kind of makes them feel eh, a little bit uneasy. Um, I like I'm I like change. Yeah, and we've experienced change. Like, what about when we have uh, new instructors? We have new instructors coming in, and we we have other ones leave, and that's just part of that change. Okay, but if we embrace it, like I said before, when you that last law, if you have strengths, you also have weaknesses, and as leaders. We want to make sure that we're constantly growing, but we also want to have change, okay? And so by doing that, you're able to get their strengths, and then you're able to get somebody else's strengths and somebody else's strengths, okay? And not be just getting their weaknesses. So effective leaders aren't just willing to change. They become change agents. They want change. They ask for change. They're constantly trying to change things up, okay? And that's part of that leadership, empowering others, okay? The third barrier to empowerment is the lack of self-worth. Okay, that just basically, uh, he says here, uh, John Peters observed, you can't lead a cavalry charge if you think you look funny on a horse. Okay, if you think of yourself and you have low self-esteem, can you really lead other people or can you empower other people? So self-conscious people are rarely good leaders. They focus on themselves, worrying about how they look all the time, what others think about them, whether they're liked, they can't give power to others because they don't feel like they have the power themselves. So the best leaders believe in themselves, their mission, and their people. They really believe in their people and they empower them. Okay? And that's the three main reasons. All right, who's this guy? Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Well, he was I... known for his humility. He was a very humble guy and his willingness to give his power and authority to others. He empowered a lot of people. His confidence in his security can be shown by his cabinet selection. Most presidents choose like-minded allies for their cabinet, the people that work in the White House. Okay? But for a president to select a rival, for instance, like he did, uh, and an incumbent post was not unprecedented. So, But to deliberately turn things around, all of his, um, he basically pulled in team members that maybe not – they didn't see eye to eye with him, but he knew that they had strengths and he empowered them by putting them in position uh, in his cabinet, okay? So Lincoln wanted the advice of men as strong as him or stronger, even if it meant 
He could be crushed or overridden. He always put himself in that position. And that shows that lit law of empowerment. His desire to unify the country was more important than his discomfort. And when his military succeeded, he gave them credit. He, he gave everybody credit by saying, they did it, not me. Okay, And he really empowered it. So when we say empowering people, it's not just by giving power, but it's also by giving credit to where credit is due. When something goes well, you really want to recognize that, hey, that's my team that did that, okay? Rather than and somebody who's kind of like scared that they're going to make them themselves dispensable might try to take the credit all themselves, okay? But he was really big about giving credit to other, all of his cabinet and the people that did the work, okay? And that, that's what uh, led him to being a, a great leader, okay? So if you believe in others, they will believe in themselves. So great things happen when you don't care about who gets the credit. That was a, Mark, a famous quote Mark Twain said. Okay, so when you when you don't try to take the credit all the thing, credit all the time, the great things happen. Okay, so think about that. When you um, do something well, even for your team, could you give your team the credit for that? Yeah. You want to give your team the credit, okay? Rather than saying, well, I kind of did that. That was my deal, okay? But if I give my team the credit, that really empowers them, okay? And that's a big thing. Um, empowerment is powerful, not only for the person being developed, but also for the mentor. Enlarging others makes you larger. So you want to build people up. You want to build them up around you. You want to empower them, give them credit, give them responsibility, and that makes you larger. That makes you bigger. Okay? And this is something that you can experience if you're willing to believe in people and give your power away. Okay? So if you, if you, like we started off, I said, I asked you that question, if anybody know anybody that is just always likes to, they're kind of the power hog. They want all the power and all the credit for themselves. Anybody know somebody like that? Okay. Now that, that again is something that we want to be very conscious about. How can I empower other people right now? Okay. So. I want, for this week's homework, I want you to take a second and I want you to think about this as a leader in the karate school. Now, is anybody, does anybody in here feel like they're not a leader in the karate school? Everybody is. You're all in leadership students. You're all leaders in the karate school. Even as a white belt, you can be a leader. Okay? The first part of leadership, we always say, is being a good follower. So that in itself is being a leader. If I follow the directions and I'm doing what I'm told, I lead by example, and that makes me a leader, okay? So as a leader in the karate school, what are the things, what are things that I can do to empower others and demonstrate the law of empowerment? Just think about that for a second, okay? Think about how can I empower others by, and what can I do to give them power? Anybody have any uh, ideas in the karate school, if you're a leader? Everybody just say, ask. If you ask somebody to do something for you, you're empowering them. You could say, Mr. or Miss White Belt, can you lead this group or show everybody this? That's empowering them, okay? It makes them feel good. It makes you look better when you do that too, okay? Uh, what are some things that I can do in, around my household to help empower my family members and add to my leadership in the family? Is there something that you could do to empower other people? Anybody have any examples or have, have one that they want to share? I think uh, to Rebecca over there, can you go ahead and share? Let me see if I can unmute it. Hold on me. Um, sir, one thing that we try to do in our household is give people different things that they're in charge of. So um, one family member might be in charge of, say, the dishes for the week, and then they get to help organize the other brothers, and you're going to help me by you put the Tupperware away here, and you can go and put the pots away over here while I wash these fresh ones kind of a thing. I love it. That's a great idea. So when you give responsibilities to your – rather than just saying – you have to go do the dishes. But if you put somebody in charge and say, you're in charge of making sure that the dishes get done, they can delegate. They can say, hey, I need help with this. Somebody's in charge of cups. Somebody's in charge of forks. 
And that helps if you're empowering them to be good leaders. That's an awesome example. Anybody else? How would you, Mr. Ian, how would you, Mr. Trent, how would you uh, empower your sister in something around the house? How could you empower her? Not sure. And I'm not saying be bossy, because that's not empowering. <laughs> if I'm just being bossy and I'm saying, I need you to do this for me. Okay, that's, that's not really what we're talking about. What could you do to show that you're empowering her? What if you asked her, okay, Miss Addison, yes, you raised your hand. Um, a way I could empower Mr. Tretton is um, some things that we need to work on for like some mid-cycle tests that just happened, for example. Um, I can see if he wants to practice together and then we both um have gotten things done and we're both practicing and then once we've done that he can next time maybe ask me to practice because now we both know how we like to practice and so you're, we're empowering each other good okay i like that example that's good so you can have him lead you and say can you help me with this and by asking for help you're empowering him he gets to be the leader right and being that he's a higher belt he probably could lead you right so he could be a good leader good okay so um what is one area that you hold on to and you don't like to give up that power or responsibility because they may have something that they just like to own and they, they have they struggle with kind of giving that responsibility up miss addison share i'm really bad about like organization i have a way i like it i have a way it's to be done and many times I don't like having others do it because I know I can do it the way I want it done and I'm not sure if others can and so I tend to keep it to myself and then hand it down once it's done and not let others have the opportunity to do it themselves. Okay. She comes by it naturally, sir. What was that? I said she comes by it naturally. I'm sure you don't know anybody else who likes to organize things. Yeah, well, you know, that's uh, something that uh, I'm sure she learned from you. But, uh, you know, when you empower somebody else, though, if you trust them and you believe in them, you know, they, even though they might not do it exactly like you, and even though they might make mistakes, you could still empower them to do it and you can give them feedback. You could say, I, would, I trust that you can do this and you could be positive about it. And you could say, can you help me organize it this way? and you could tell them exactly how you like to do it, but you empower them, okay? So that would be good. So you, it would be healthy for you to maybe let your brother organize something for you. Yeah? <laughs> okay, so you might be reluctant. Anybody else have one example of some, something that they hold on to and they don't wanna lose, let, let go of that control? For me, it's uh, mowing the lawn. I'm very particular kind of like that. I, I say it's got to be this way and the lines are going to go this way. And if my son uh, um, is, is asked to mow it, he mows it a totally different way. And I don't like to give that power up, but uh, so at the same time, I need to, right? I know that my son, he's strong enough now, he's fast enough at doing it, and he likes to earn a little bit of money. So I should empower him to take that off my plate, okay? And that's something that I'm getting better at. Okay, anybody else have something to share? No? Okay, well everybody's nice and quiet today. Um, so I want you guys to be thinking about these things, how you can improve in these areas of empowerment and giving responsibility to your subordinates and your team, okay? Well, that's it for today's. We, like I said, these are normally about 30 minutes, so you guys will have about 15 minutes to talk as family members and you know, talk about empowerment and how you guys can empower each other to do more things. Um, but I am very proud of everybody working hard through this. And I know we had a lot of successful black belt testing going on this last weekend with mid cycles. We had over 100, about 110 people come through the school in all of our sessions testing. Uh, and it looked really awesome. So great job doing that. Remember, we do have karate in the park coming up this weekend. So I'd like to see everybody going to the park. 
having a lot of fun with your games and, and all the things that you're going to be doing in the park to um, celebrate. Remember, we're going to be kicking water balloons and eating ice. I, uh, we'll, we'll have popsicles. We'll have all kinds of fun stuff there. So on that note, and then we also have our tournament coming up. There's only one, one more week to register for the tournament. So make sure everybody's registering for that. And then I've got my kickboxing class on Wednesday and Friday. And I'm also doing an extra one on Thursday at 6 a.m. Uh, bright and early. So if you want to join me online, you can jump on to my personal meeting ID, which is on the schedule. So hopefully everybody has an awesome night. Thank you all for joining us for another weekly Matt chat. And everybody have a great evening. Bye, sir. And thank you, sir. You're welcome, Mr. Carter. Thank you, Mr. Aiden. Smartinson and everybody else.